Good afternoon, everyone. As good as you can make it. It's it's not a good afternoon. It's not a good time in general for us Seahawks fans, but uh, the beat goes on, and I'm going to continue to make co content on it. I'm going to continue to talk about it until there ceases to be a Seahawks team for me to talk about, I guess. So, as good as you can make it, I guess. <clears throat> time for another edition of Snap Count Monday, this one coming on a Tuesday, because we played Monday night, of course. So, we've got some Snap Count data. This season, look, it's over. This season, we're just playing out the string. This season is officially like a car that has been totaled, and it's already been deemed not worth saving. But that doesn't mean you can't learn some stuff from it. So we're going to continue to look at these snap counts for the rest of the season, and we're going to see who's getting on the field, who's not getting on the field, and what that might mean going forward, and whether or not I can at least give the team some degree of praise for divvying up uh, snap counts. Okay. You guys know how it goes. We start with the offense. We go to the defense. Opening up with the running backs, this is very simple. There's not a whole lot to discuss here. Alex Collins got 19 snaps last night. DJ Dallas got 28. So DJ Dallas was actually the primary running back last night, which I find to be kind of interesting. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. DJ Dallas is under contract for for two more years. He's going to be here next year. Alex Collins, I don't know. He's a veteran. He's been in the league a while. He's not playing great right now. I, I know the hip is probably bothering him, but either way, Alex Collins might not be here next year, and DJ Dallas will be. If DJ Dallas ends up being a viable offensive player, that helps. So if he can prove that he belongs here, that he deserves to get some share of snaps going forward, that's good. I like that. Now... That's the good news. That's the part I appreciate. However, Josh Johnson, who I made a whole video about yesterday because I was was excited for him, zero snaps on offense. By the way, Penny Hart, who we were told before kickoff was going to play Summit running back, did not. So another broken promise, I guess. Now, to be, to be perfectly honest, Penny Hart playing running back for a few snaps in a game, that's low on the list of things I give a crap about. It, it barely even, it's not even really on the list, but yeah, that did not happen. Now, as for Josh Johnson not getting out there, I kind of get it because we had so few snaps on offense, it's hard to get him out there, but you can't get him out there at least a couple times. I was excited to see him play, and now we got nothing. So yeah, hopefully Josh Johnson gets his chance in the next six games at some point. That's what I'll say about that. Okay, wide receiver, pretty much what you would expect. DK Metcalf was off the field for... Oh, and by the way, we only had 47 snaps on offense last night. 47. So Metcalf was off the field for three snaps. Lockett was on the field for every snap. So Lockett's getting most more snaps than Metcalf, which I find to be a little odd, but it's not worth really talking about. Lockett's at about 89%. Metcalf's at about 83%. Seems fine. Especially because we know Metcalf is not 100%. Eskridge, uh, 13 snaps, which is his career high. He did make a couple of plays, but didn't really impress. We might talk more about him later, but uh, he did play 13 snaps. Freddie Swain played 31 snaps. So um, clearly there is still a level of comfort with Freddie Swain playing that we don't have with Eskridge, even though we know that Freddie Swain is nowhere near as talented as Eskridge. So that's... Probably not going to go away anytime this season, unfortunately. No hate to Freddie Swain. He actually made a good play last night. I'm, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying Freddie Swain's awful or anything, but I know where the talent is. I know where the potential is, and it's not with Freddie Swain. Penny Hart did not play as receiver. He didn't play at all on offense, which I, I, don't, I could go either way on that. On the one hand, it would have been interesting to see him at running back. On the other hand, we didn't play enough snaps. Got to keep some of those drives alive a little longer so you can get deeper into the playbook. And Phil Dorsett, nothing. Butch brings us to tight end, which is really starting to um, become a little more clear who we view as our number one tight end. Um, earlier this season, it was a little more balanced, but right now Everett is taking up most of the snaps, as he should, and it's it's working out fairly well. He's getting open consistently. He's making plays in the passing game now. 37 snaps for Everett, so like 80% of the total snaps, pretty good. Will Disley got 16 snaps, 
I wouldn't mind that number being a little bit higher, but it's 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 fine. I think this is where we should be. Everett has emerged as one of the few bright spots of this season that was somewhat of question mark. Like nobody doubted Lockett's competency going into this season. So him being good is not anything that anybody is even 1% surprised by. But uh, Everett starting to come along as this season goes along. It's one of the few things I can even try to hang my hat on here. So that's good. Uh, Colby, nothing. And Mabry, nothing. I don't even think Mabry's active. So, um, look, Parkinson, it's hard for him to get out there when we're not even, when, when we're not even running 50 plays in a game. So I, I, I attribute a lot of that to uh, why Parkinson's not playing right now. And this tight end uh, snap count is more or less fine by me. Now we go over to the defense here, starting with the defensive ends. And I do have some... I'm going to call it good news, but it's not really good news, okay? So Carlos Dunlap played four snaps out of 84. Out of 84 snaps, he played four. On the one hand, that's good because it basically tells you that he's been benched because he ain't doing anything. And that's good because he has no business being out there right now. But it's bad because it reminds you how much money we gave that dude, how much money he's going to be owed next year to do nothing for us. And we've already basically given up on him. Correctly so. However, that doesn't make it a good thing. It makes it a necessary thing. So, <clears throat> if we can get this number down to zero, that that's probably for the best. But, uh, I mean, I'm not going to celebrate it. It's not good to be giving players big money and then having them do nothing. Alton Robinson was the recipient of some of those new snaps. He got on the field 27 times. And he did some stuff, man. I, I was... I was noticing him making a couple plays. So Alton Robinson, got to get him on the field more going forward. I like what I see. I, I, I think he, I, I think that dude gives us a chance. I think that he has a chance to be part of the future. Give me more than 27, but we're headed in the right direction for a little, uh, for the last few weeks at least. Benson Mayo, 41 snaps. Um, I know he's basically our linebacker right now, so... I'm not I'm not mad about it. It just it's annoying seeing a career journeyman who has a l super low ceiling getting on the field so much while Alton can't. Kerry Hyder, 53 snaps. Kerry Hyder actually made a couple plays out there. I think he played okay. So that's fine and Kerry Hyder might be here next year anyway. So got to keep an eye on what he's doing and he's getting his snaps. Rasheem Green leads the defensive line in snaps with 61. And, look, Rasheem Green actually played a decent game last night. He got a little bit of pressure, um, made a couple of plays, got screwed on a roughing the passer, and had the blocked PAT uh, two-point conversion, which, hey, it's a highlight. It's something to be like, hey, that was fun to watch. For two minutes, the Seahawks were fun to watch again, right? But we know that he's not going to be here next year, and we know he's not good. So I don't understand why we keep giving him all this action. I, I don't get it. Go get somebody who you don't know about. Go get somebody who might actually have upside. Rasheem Green has had more than enough opportunity to prove that he belongs uh, as being more than just another guy in the NFL, and he hasn't done it. So I'm not saying he played bad yesterday. Uh, I, I mean, I think he played flawed. He played a flawed game, but get somebody else out there, please. Defensive tackle, Puna Ford, 54 snaps. Given you fact he played 84 snaps, that's about right. Al Woods, 45, sure. LJ Collier got 24 snaps. Good God, that is LJ Collier's music. And he actually got some pressure. He actually got some collapse in that pocket. But he didn't really play too well overall. Um, so, kind of a mixed bag there. And I... It, it's not like LJ stands a great chance of being here next year. So, it's not like this stuff really matters that much. But why not get him out there instead of Carlos Dunlap at the very least, right? Like, at least Collier is young and could get better. Dunlap, he's toast. So, I don't know, maybe move Collier back to defensive end and just play him instead of Dunlap. I don't know, I would rather watch Collier than Dunlap right now, I'll tell you that much. 
So he actually made a couple of half decent plays uh, last night. So maybe 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 Collier's earned himself a little bit of extra play time. Brian Monet, 33 snaps. He seemed to do whatever. He was fine. And Kim Dichi was inactive. So decent spread of snap counts here, I think. This is reasonable. Linebacker, uh, Bobby Wagner played every snap because, of course, he does. Uh, he played okay, I think, by the way. I, I wasn't overly mad at him. He didn't blow my socks off or anything, but he was fine. Uh, Jordan Brooks played 75 snaps again, so close to 90%, and he played good. Yeah, Brooks played good. He had a good game. Daryl Taylor, 35 snaps. He made some plays in the backfield. He made the sack. He got some other pressures. He got a little overexcited once or twice, I think, and blew a couple of plays that he could have made, but I think Taylor was one of our better players, so good to see him getting back on track. Uh, nothing from any other linebacker, so pretty much what we've come to expect here. I'd like to see Taylor get like 40 snaps a game, so he's close for the rest of the season. I mean, why not? Um, obviously at this point, we've kind of given up on playing him at linebacker for now, which is whatever, that's fine, but get him some serious burn at defensive end on these passing downs, because, look, we, there, there's nothing left to play for other than getting young guys some experience and getting a chance to look at some of these guys, and Taylor, I've already seen enough to know he's part of the future, obviously, like, like, Taylor's going to be here next year, Taylor's going to be part of this team's future plans for sure. We I, we all know that, but um, the more experience he can get now, the better. Like uh, We're going to be playing some pretty good offensive tackles the rest of the season. The more experience Daryl Taylor can get against those guys, the more things he can learn to take into next season, the better. Get him those opportunities as much as possible. And that brings us to cornerback. Um, pretty much what you would expect here. It's actually pretty uh, simplistic. DJ Reed and Sidney Jones played every snap. 84. 84. 84 snap. Let me calm down. Um, Ugo Amadi played about half the snaps. 41. And Ryan Neal played 11. Is, is this like... You remember that movie Gremlins? Where you couldn't feed the Gremlins after midnight? Is there like a Gremlins type thing going on with Ryan Neal where we're only allowed to play him 11 snaps a game? Like, this is getting a little spooky right here. Look at this. Three straight weeks of 11 snaps exactly for Ryan Neal. And I'm not saying the defense played bad last night. They didn't. But Ryan Neal's a playmaker. Maybe he makes a big play out there that actually flips that game. Maybe he forces a turnover. Why wouldn't you get him out there more? Trey Flowers is gone. Bless you on Austin got shelved again. Trey Brown's out for the season. Blair's out for the season. Why not get Neal out there a little bit more? And I know you want to get Jordan Brooks out there as much as possible, and Jordan Brooks did have a good game. I'm not trying to take anything away from Jordan Brooks, but Ugo Amadi, he's looking a little more like a jag right now than I thought he was going to be, so I don't know why you wouldn't give Ryan Neal a little more of a shot in some capacity. Good things happen when he's out there, it seems to me, so... Hopefully that's something we can uh, improve on as this season goes on, but... Uh, 11 snaps for three games in a row. That's weird. I don't like it. Well, it's better than 10, I guess. It's better than 10 snaps. And that's it for Snap Count Monday on a Tuesday. So, see you guys a little later today. There will be an hour-long stream tonight to discuss the uh, detritus of that game from last night. But uh, for now, I bid you all adieu. Have a good day. Go Hawks. Keep an eye out for uh, Personnel Decisions Tuesday coming later. Go Hawks!